thank you very much for joining us, and thank you everyone for staying with us after our delayed start. But um, so let's start. When was the last time you'd seen raining in the mountain, and did you? Yeah, yeah. raining mountain. Uh, mountain. Uh, it's uh, made in uh, 90, uh, 97. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 79, 97. So you saw it on its original yeah, release, in original, oh, okay. and the release. The, and it's very success uh, released in all over the Asia countries. What, what did you think seeing it again tonight after so many years? And yeah, too so many years. I I, don't, I didn't come, <laughs> but it's it's a new uh, version. It's a yeah. new new print. Yeah, it's well, a a DCP a digital restoration. But okay. yeah, yes, yeah. yes, it's very good. It looks very good. So tell us a little bit about the King Hu Foundation as a start. What what is what is its What's its major focus and its work? And then how did you come to become involved with the King Hu Foundation? Yeah. Uh, after King Hu passed away at uh, 1997, then uh, uh, we have five members of the uh, King Hu Foundation, which including uh, Jim Pei Pei and uh, the first, uh, the, the first uh, student in this film, Su Jun, and uh, a professor from uh, USC uh, uh, and me as a director. So we, we together formed the King Hu Foundation. The reason is we wanna keep all the King Hu's film here. And uh, if more people see the film and that they are maybe not in the same time as us and they have questions like tonight, I can come in to answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, how much of an influence was King Hu in your career, both as a filmmaker, but also personally or professionally? Did you did you have a chance to work with him? And what was your relationship with him like? Yeah. Uh, King Hu, it's, it's uh, uh, one of the best uh, director in Taiwan and Hong Kong. In that moment means the Chinese in the film industry. And I, since I'm the student in film school, I was really watching King Hu's film, and he influenced me a lot mm -hmm. because uh, his uh, uh, second film, uh, it's called Drinking, Drinking With Us, mm -hmm. Drinking With Me, mm -hmm. which is very nice movie, uh, starred by the Chen Pei Pei, who is in the Quanjin Tiger, uh, I think yeah. uh, Tigers, uh, yeah, the, the movie. And uh, so since that, everyone's film is influenced by King Hu, especially uh, Ang Lee. Mm -hmm. His uh, film is totally influenced by King Hu. He, uh, he, he uh, used the most uh, advanced editing to create a new montage on the film, it's stuff with King Hu. Mm -hmm. So uh, it influenced a lot. And I made a few uh, action movie also uh, with uh, some uh, uh, actors here also. <laughs> and uh, we all follow uh, Kavi King Hu's technique. So he influenced a lot, mm -hmm. yes. He was also a very exacting director, a very demanding director. Um, and sort of gained a reputation for maybe working over schedule or over budget, et cetera, et cetera. But so he left, he, you know, he worked for the Shaw Brothers in Hong Kong. And then when he felt that they were putting too much controls over his final work, even re-editing the final cut, he went to Taiwan for more freedom. Dragon Inn was his first sort of major independent success. Uh, three years later, Touch of Zen came out, which was a huge international critical success. And then he ended up going to Korea to shoot these two films a few years after that. Can you talk a little bit about, do we know why he went to Korea to shoot these two films? Was there a particular reason? Was he looking for freedom again, or was it a budget question? What, what, why did he end up going to Korea to shoot these uh, films? Yeah, Mr. Hu, it's, uh, he's a very serious director. Mm -hmm. He's shooting A Touch of Zen uh, two, totally two years. Mm -hmm. It's only because the, the grass cannot match because you have to wait the next winter, then the grass looks the same. Then he stopped shooting for one year, then start continue. Right. It take two and a half years to finish the film. The reason he went to Korea, Korean, it's 
the temple is in Song Dynasty, and the temple in Korea, Korean still a Song Dynasty style. In Taiwan, doesn't have this kind of temple anymore. Taiwan's temple mostly a Qin Dynasty, so it doesn't look fit the story, fit the story. That's the reason go to uh, Korean. Also, in that moment, Taiwan is getting expensive, uh, budget-wise. Mm -hmm. And the Korean, uh, for the extra, uh, even the food, all that, it's still cheaper than Taiwan. Mm -hmm. That's why they go to Taiwan, uh, Korean, um, schedule shooting for six months, but if I end up, it takes two years to finish two film now, <laughs> two film running in the mountain and the leeching in the mountain, yeah. Well, there's a, there's a French documentary on King Hu that maybe you've seen because it's streaming at the Criterion Channel, but one of the, the Taiwanese producers, historians, is, says that it, when he was shooting in Taiwan or in Korea, a joke started circulating that he would wake up in the morning, look out the window and say, the clouds aren't beautiful enough today, let's just not shoot, we'll start again, we'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> Is that were, they, were there rumors circulating at the time that this is? It's what was a that? rumor. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a rumor. No, it is a rumor. Oh, yeah, it's a rumor. No, no. Well, uh, Mister Who, he he knows. He knows the money is important. Yeah, okay. You know, all the filmmakers know. You only have certain budget. You have to finish with the budget. If you over budget, you know, sometimes it's very difficult. Even today's the big directors. So he he is very precise very picky uh, outwards, but he won't say, oh, the crowd cannot move together. <laughs> I will not shoot. <laughs> so, yeah. um, where would, you know, this film was made concurrently in Korea with um, uh, Legend of the Mountain, Legend of the Mountain, yeah. and uh, Manola Dargis, when that film was re-released in 2002, as part of the new restoration program, the Taiwan Film Institute, she okay. referred to it as, um, Wuxia adjacent in terms of its relationship to his previous sort of martial arts mm -hmm. films, Dragon Inn, um, uh, Touch of Zen, Come Drink With Me. So th these two films sort of uh, raining in the mountain, they have the same elements, sort of references in, of Buddhist imagery and Buddhist themes, and um, but also martial arts elements, um, this amazing, obviously, visual style of his. But in this film, Raining in the Mountain, it seems to be in slightly different ratios than the previous films that established his martial arts or wuxia sort of reputation and certainly re-transformed the genre. Um, where would you place this film, Raining in the Mountain, in his larger body of work and reputation? Yeah, I think so. I think uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, this film... Uh, it's not really fit to his, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the beginning, the uh, Dragon Inn Hotel or the Touch of Zen, that kind of uh, same category. It's, it's, it's a little bit different. And uh, there is no reason why he changed. Mm -hmm. No reason. He just, he just uh, uh, in that moment, he's more thinking about uh, uh, the meaning of life. In, uh, in Buddhism. Uh, anyway, tai Taiwan or chi Chinese uh, culture, uh, more or less, mostly it's influenced by the Buddhism, mostly. And uh, uh, why Buddhism uh, influenced the Chinese uh, culture, I think that you want to talk this is film here, but uh, end up it, the film didn't come out really explaining why the influence there and it become uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, in, the, in the Buddhist temple, even you're Buddhist, you're a big monk, you're still fighting each other for the power and up with the film is talking like that. Right. But uh, Mr. Hu is very uh, concentrated on the visual uh, image. So his, his film, the, the picture, the color, the composition are very uh, artistic. Mm -hmm. And the movement, you can see the in, in, the, in the movie, all the actor, actress, their movement are very oriental, very, very oriental. Mm -hmm. And uh, you don't believe 
normally people, when I see you, I do something like this. You know, in the movie, it's a lot. You watch me, I watch you. And in the real life, it's, it's nothing like that. Right. But all this influenced by the Chinese opera. Mm -hmm. They're all influenced by Chinese opera. According to King Hu, he started watching opera when he was four years old. And almost, uh, he's grew up in Beijing. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Derry, which is the uh, Chinese opera mm -hmm. every day. So he's influenced that, that, that. Even the walking, you see the actor, uh, actress in the movie when they walk in, the very, uh, all that is uh, <laughs> Chinese opera style. I'm going to turn it over to the audience in a few minutes. I have a, well, after a few questions, I have a few more questions of my own, then we'll turn it over. You were talking about his sort of visual style, visual his style. very strong visual style, yes. an authorial signature, we would say. But he has a literal authorial signature. He, uh, My understanding is he did all the calligraphy for the opening titles of all of his films. He did yes. that himself. Yes. So when he signs his name, written and directed by, yes. that's his, he wrote those, he did the his calligraphy. Own, his own Understanding that his sort of like, you know, focus on every aspect of the film, even from that, I, I'm curious, can, can we yeah. take any, draw any meaning from his um, calligraphy style? And, and, and what, can we, so can we know right from the beginning of the film how he wants us to sort of read the rest of the film based on how I he's think so, his, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yes, yes. The, uh, Mr. Who, he is... Uh, He's an artist. He's a definitely an artist, and he he do everything by himself. Mm -hmm. Even the, the the wardrobe and the, all the props, because in Song Dynasty, most people don't know how, how it looks. So he he design everything by himself. He make this everything by his own hands. Also the wardrobe, or even the shoes, everything. So that's what you. The, the, the opening title, the choreography is by himself, and that, that's his personality. It's very high class uh, choreography. It's like the one of the emperor in Song Dynasty. Mm -hmm. And he just copied his style. Mm -hmm. Very uh, f famous emperor, uh, Song Hui Zhong, and he just co co uh, copied that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Mr. Hu, he, he, he's a, uh, he's a print printer. He start uh, printing the uh, billboard of of movie when he's uh, 17 years old. Right. When went to Hong Kong, so he he start uh, print the, the the board for the uh, theater in right. in front of the theater. He started out as a graphic artist for yeah, the graphic film industry. Artist, yeah, sure, uh, of course. He's, yeah. he's very famous, and uh, then you you see that then you know this person. He, he's an artist. You just know. <laughs> he was also an in, a really incredible student of history, and he knew Chinese history and the periods that he was focusing on Ming, very Ming well. Ming, Ming Dynasty, Dynasty. Yeah. And, and very focusing on these stories for a very specific reason. My understanding is that he he very much was using historical backdrops and historical stories yeah. to make a commentary, political commentary about the Political, present day. You're right. It's very interesting to see his most famous films, the Inn trilogy, where all the action sort of takes place, you know, in, yeah. in inns, where you expect intrigue, where you expect um, plotting, where you expect various strangers to come together in one place. But here in Raining in the Mountain, it all, all of the, it, they're, it's set in a Buddhist monastery where supposedly these earthly sort of, uh -huh. and you mentioned it earlier, these earthly sort of activities aren't supposed to be taking place, but of course they are. This monastery is full of politics, uh -huh. full of corruption well, and intrigue. Yes. Yeah. At this time in the mid '70s, when he was working on this film, in the late '70s when the film came right. out, what do you think? Do you what do you think is the political commentary or the message might have been in terms of what he was thinking about the present day situation at that time? Uh, yeah, it's it's very difficult. Uh, King Hu, of course, he's uh, he's the person loved his country. Mm -hmm. He he left China. Uh, when he was uh, 16 years old and, uh, and uh, went to Hong Kong by himself. No relatives, no friends. Of course, he know uh, in that moment, uh, Taiwan and uh, Hong Kong uh, 
economically uh, very difficult in that moment, mm -hmm. and the communists want to take over, mm -hmm. uh, and the people don't don't know where to go, mm -hmm. and uh, King Hu definitely, as as a Chinese, he he, he wanted he wanted his country be strong, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and he said uh, uh, his story uh, person he understand why uh, Song Dynasty. Uh, the Ming Dynasty, though they uh, corrupt, uh, he, he understand that, right. and he saw the same question still happen today. Yeah. That's why he put in the film, right. and uh, no place want to accept uh, his point of view, mm -hmm. but uh, he can only put in the movie, mm -hmm. and he says, "Oh, that's the history," but it's not history. He's talking about today. <laughs> Do you have any questions from the audience? Before we wrap up. Right up here. So we're going to bring a mic to you, so hold on a second. Also, some of the shots we shot in the Yosemite. Uh, <laughs> the reason is uh, we're going to shoot two films. Uh, one film called Running in the Mountain, another film is called Legion of the Mountain. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all financed by the first movie a company in Taiwan, Mr. Huang, Huang Zhou Han. He will finance the film. And in that moment, uh, King Wu was waiting for the money to come. But uh, the, the, the banker says, you have to start shooting, then I can give you the money. So me and the, Mr. Hu, also the uh, one of uh, UCA uh, student uh, cinema school, uh, John Sheriff, who's become a big, big uh, photographer, mm -hmm. and uh, me. And uh, a lot of uh, one was a film student. Four of us went to Yosemite, and I am the double for the for the monk. Hey, which scene was which scene was that? <laughs> only back. Okay. You can only see my back. You cannot see my face, of course. And uh, that's the Yosemite and the shooting. We we, we shipped the footage back to Taiwan. Then we got the money <laughs> <laughs> to start the movie. So there's a little bit of Yosemite in this film yes. that was shot in Korea. Uh, more, uh, more, mostly it's in the uh, Legion of the Mountain. Legion of the Mountain. That's so it's amazing. It's yes. amazing. Uh, yeah, I have the picture. Legend of the Mountain. I, I, uh -huh. I still have the picture. Okay, the question. Question. Well, thank you for sharing your memories with us. Um, I was just wondering if perhaps since you have a, a, hit a long history with King Hu, do you have any reflections on the long friendship between King Hu and director Li Hanxiang? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, everyone knows that Li Hanxiang directed a film called uh, Liang San Bo Yi Chu Ying Tai, which means it's a butterfly lover, mm -hmm. which means a very famous uh, uh, story in the Thai, in the Chan Chinese. Uh, 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 um, a woman you know, uh, went to the school, just uh, uh, try to uh, uh, went to the school, so it became a man. Mm -hmm. And but they, he falling in love with uh, some people. Uh, the the Liang Zhang Boy Zhu Yitai is uh, by uh, uh, Li Hanxiang, but uh, the assistant director is Hu Jinquan, is King Hu, and uh, King Hu also uh, acting in the movie a little bit, because. Uh, Li Haixiang was very busy in that moment. He's directing uh, pre-production on his next movie. So he called King Hu. King Hu is never directed before. He's only an actor. Mm -hmm. But that uh, Li Haixiang, he's assistant director of Li Haixiang. King Hu is assistant director of Li Haixiang. So Li Haixiang says, OK, I'm very busy now. You direct for me. You know, sometimes we do that. It happened. <laughs> So uh, they are actually they are sufu and the student, the master and the student. But uh, uh, f later on, uh, yeah, they all go go into different direction. King Hu was become very famous on the action film, or or what we call kung fu film, and the Li Hanxiang's on the story on the Qing Dynasty, Qing Dynasty film. So uh, they, they are very close relations, very, very close. And the 12, 12 of them become a brothers. You know, the 12 people become a brothers, brother whole. And uh, inside this movie, uh, the, 
the, uh, the, you know, the, the very wise monk. It's not a monk, the very wise Wei Ming, or the, the person with, uh, with many, many girls. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. he is the number, I think he's the number three brother. King Hu is the number 12, number 11 brother. Total, they have 12 brothers in a shop in that moment. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Li Anxiang is number five, I guess. King Hu is number 10 or 11. So they are very close. Any other questions from the audience? Right down here. Uh, could you speak about how King Hu frequently reused actors, uh, not just in between Legend of the Mountain, Rain of the Mountain, but also from Touch of Zen, Dragon Inn, how he used, he frequently switched, like the, whether they'd be a villain or a, or a hero, like with Xu Cheng or, or Tu Feng. C could you speak about, like, did he have a lot of fun in reconfiguring who played what sort of part within, within all his uh, because I, I mentioned before, King Hu's uh, style mostly copy influenced, not copy influenced by Chinese opera, and in Chinese opera, they put the uh, painting on the face, so you cannot really see the detail of the uh, emotion. Uh, mostly, it's the eye. So for King Hu, he select uh, his uh, actor mostly according to your. Uh, he ha it has to be very big first. Mm -hmm. You can see all eyes are very big. <laughs> all his actors are very big. You know? And he also only used certain actor or actress he's he familiar with. And uh, Xu Feng. Xu Feng, uh, uh, when he, Xu Feng became uh, his first film, a dra The Dragon in Hotel, she, she's only 16. And very uh, thin and uh, with a big eye, he cannot really act in very uh, good. Not, not very, uh, but the, the eye movements, uh, yeah, it's like uh, the, the title, very uh, spiritual. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, he's very, uh, the person, yeah, he, he used mostly people he know long time. Mm -hmm. He's not using someone he don't know. Or in this film, everyone, all his uh, like brothers, sisters, together, long time, all are long time friends mm -hmm. in this movie. Uh, everyone almost, uh, all, all the films he used, he used, he used same, same, same. Is that the question? Yeah, he may be, yes, yes, he did that, he did that. And uh, he, but, but he's, he, yeah, he's an artist, he, I think he understand, he knows everything. Mm -hmm. Should be, <laughs> I think he's right, yes, you, your question, yes, he is. He worked very closely with his actors. Very close, yeah. he's very close. Because he yeah. knew exactly going in where he was gonna put, he storyboarded every shot very yes. meticulously. Yes. And he would work with the actors very closely, even about their performance, even before he would tell them where the camera was going to be. So he was, do you think that he, he established this troupe? I guess it's two questions. Did, th did this troupe of people he worked with, this group of people that he stayed with, was it because those were the people that understood him and, or, 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 and, and connected with him, or they were just the ones that could be the most patient with him? <laughs> well, uh Usually, we, we all, all the director have his own crew members, mm -hmm. what we call crew members. Those people working with King Hu from the very beginning. Right. And mostly, they understand Chinese opera. Uh -huh. Mostly, they are, they are, some of them are opera thinker, Chinese opera thinker, but otherwise, they all understand Chinese opera. And for the crew, yes, he only used the mostly important person is the uh, cameraman, mm -hmm. it's the DP. And uh, he only used, uh, his whole life only used four DP. This one is the very new, Chen Zemingjie is very new. Mm -hmm. Before it's, uh, uh, you know, only used four DPs. He's always with same kind of cool, cool persons. I suppose working with this film as, the, as his assistant director. And 
In that moment, I'm already directed uh, some features, mm -hmm. but uh, because King Hu is my my uh, my uh, master is uh, Li Xin, who is also uh, one of the biggest Chinese um, movie directors. So my my uh, master, my li my teacher says, "Hey, working with helping uh, uh, King Wu." So I suppose go to uh, uh, working on this film in uh, Korean. But uh, my wife just in that moment delivered a baby, so I have to stay home. <laughs> then Tang Han Zhang, Tang Han Zhang also uh, graduated from UCA and MFA. Yes. Because you would have been gone for two years. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot go there for two years. And uh, I also working with uh, Li Han Xiang as his producer. Li Han Xiang made a film in uh, Pasadena. It's called Lover's Lover. Lover's Lover. Yeah, that's the Asian's uh, last movie. Mm -hmm. So uh, they they all great, very very good director. Only problem is Chinese movie not like uh, Japanese movie uh, Sakira, uh, Kurosawa, Akira Kurosawa, mm -hmm. uh, very famous and Chinese movie. People thinking uh, not that good until A Touch of Sand and uh, and uh, Li Hanxiang. Then people know. Now we know Ho Xiao Xian and the Zhang Yimou then China, mm -hmm. you know. Well, speaking of that, this is the last question, but um, do you feel like King Hu's reputation is where it should be now internationally? I mean, do you think that he is as recognized as he should be? Obviously, the, the foundation has a say in that or would, would like to be maybe more? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course, uh, for as a, as a Chinese movie industry, uh, King Wu definitely is one of the pioneer, yeah. one of the one of the artists, the big one, and uh, it's because he's passed away too young, he's only uh, seventy-five, uh, sixty-five. Yeah. Uh, he passed away. Uh, if he's still alive, he will be much better movies coming out. Mm -hmm. I go, oh no, you know the movie he's planning to do. I go, oh no, yeah. and. Uh, uh, Jiang Wu supposed to direct it, but I never have chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, I show the Kung Fu uh, King Wu Foundation show uh, working uh, more more hard to uh, make more young students watching the film mm -hmm. uh, because it's very Oriental, very Chinese, very 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 Chinese. I should say that. Well, I probably should have said this at the beginning, but welcome back to UCLA, and thank you very much for thank coming you. with us here or joining us here tonight. Thank you very much thank for your you time. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, everybody. everybody.